EPROM, SRAM, DRAM, ROM. It can be confusing, but after this video, you're going to finally understand the difference between them. Let's start with the most basic question. What really is a computer memory? Think of it as just tightly packed zeros and ones. This can be achieved with transistors and capacitors, or not so popular nowadays, magnetic domains on spinning platters. These facts bring us to the first and most important division, volatile memory and non-volatile memory. In simple words, it determines if your data will be lost when the chip is cut from power. Let's start with volatile memory. The fastest memory in the world is SRAM, Static Random Access Memory. It's complex and expensive to manufacture, so it's primarily used for CPU registers and CPU cache. Registers are the immediate workspace for the processor holding the data it is currently manipulating. They are extremely fast but tiny. A single register on a 64-bit computer holds 8 bytes. Single CPU contains multiple registers. They are built into the processor itself. Caches are slower than registers. Located on or very close to the CPU, it stores frequently accessed data from the main memory, typically RAM. This cache is further divided into levels. L1, the fastest and smallest cache, integrated into each CPU core. L2, slower but larger. It can be on the CPU core or on the chip. And L3, the largest and slowest, typically shared by all CPU cores. Next up is DRAM, dynamic random access memory. This is the main memory of the computer, often called just RAM. RAM is where the operating system processes, currently running applications and the data they are using are stored for quick access by the CPU. It stores data using a capacitor and transistor for each bit. This design is much simpler and cheaper than SRAM, allowing for much larger memory capacities. Let's talk shortly about its history. For a long time, DRAM operated asynchronously. This meant it had its own internal clock and when the CPU needed data, it had to wait for the RAM to be ready. This created a bottleneck as increasingly fast CPUs had to pause for the slower memory. A major leap forward was the implementation of SDRAM, Synchronous Dynamic RAM, because it synchronized itself with the computer's system clock. By operating on the same clock cycle as the CPU, the memory controller knows exactly when the data will be ready, eliminating those waiting periods. The next evolution was DDR SDRAM, the longest acronym here, Double Data Rate Synchronous Dynamic RAM. And I am pretty sure you have one inside your computer now, unless you are watching this from a computer history museum. As the name suggests, it doubles the performance of regular SDRAM because it can transfer data on both the rising and the falling edges of the clock signal. Over the years, we had DDR2, 3, 4, and DDR5, which is the current standard. The launch of DDR6 is planned for the end of 2025, but keep in mind it won't be instantly available for mass sale. Every generation improves bandwidth, clock speed, power consumption, and allows for larger capacities compared to its ancestors. Now we can move to the slower but also very important non-volatile memory, where you can safely store your data without a constant power supply. Let's start with ROM read-only memory. They are typically used to store firmware, it's what your computer is looking for right after starting BIOS slash UFI. Actually, true, ROM, PROM and EEPROM are outdated. Nowadays, modern firmware is stored on EEPROM, electrically erasable programmable ROM, or specifically a type called NORFLASH. Think of it like this. All squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Similarly, all flash memory is a type of EEPROM, but it has evolved so much that it's now considered its own category. The key difference that separates them is how they are erased. Traditional EEPROM is byte erasable. You can change a single byte of data at a time. This is slow but very precise, making it great for storing small configuration settings that change often. Flash memory is block erasable. To change data, you must erase an entire section or block at once. This is much faster and allows for higher storage density, which is why it's used for firmware using NORFLASH and in SSD disks using NAND flash. So to sum up, modern firmware is stored on NORFLASH, a type of non-volatile memory that evolved from EEPROM technology. Next, we have SSDs, solid state drive and NVMe, 
non-volatile memory express. As I said a minute ago, it uses NAND flash memory technology, floating gate transistors, where NVMe is a communication protocol or interface used by modern SSDs, while a typical older SSD operated using the SATA interface, the NVMe protocol offers significantly faster speeds. These are currently the most popular disks in the world. But we have also HDD, hard disk drives, today mostly replaced by SSDs, which are faster, more durable and have lower power consumption. HDDs use magnetic platters that store data as tiny magnetic fields, north slash south poles equals ones slash zeros. You may have seen in films that people try to destroy data using huge magnets, while a powerful specialized magnet can indeed damage the disk and erase the data, this data still may be recoverable with forensic tools, so keep that in mind, you criminals. Next one, USB flash drives or simply pen drives. It uses a principle similar to SSD's NAND flash. However, the speed is determined by the USB standards, for example, 2.0, 3.0, 3.1, the higher the version number, the faster data can flow. Let's stop for a moment. As we discussed a minute ago, data is stored as a bunch of ordered electrons. Have you ever wondered how it's possible that the electric charges don't slowly fade away when the power is cut off? Actually, flash memory relies on quantum physics. It uses a floating gate transistor to trap electrons in an insulated layer. The underlying quantum mechanical principle is quantum tunneling, specifically, Fowler Nordheim tunneling. That's pretty cool. Last category, optical storage like CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. This category of storage is fundamentally different from the semiconductor-based memories we've discussed. Instead of using transistors and electrical charges, optical storage uses a laser to read and write data on a spinning disk. The core principle for all three is the same. Data is stored as a series of microscopic physical indentations called pits and flat areas called lens, all on a reflective material layer within the disk. The main difference between CDs, DVDs and Blu-rays lies in their data density, which is achieved by using different types of lasers. In short, by moving from an infrared laser to red and finally to blue, engineers were able to shrink the size of the pits and lens, allowing far more data to be stored in the same physical space. And that's basically it. Of course, you can find some exotic, less common memory types like MRAM, magnetoresistive RAM, which is type of non-volatile RAM that stores data in magnetic domains, or RARAM, resistive RAM, which works by changing the resistance across the electric solid state material, often called memory store. Keep in mind the field is rapidly evolving and there is active research going on to develop better alternatives. Some technologies have been improved since the early 50s, Others were freshly baked in labs a couple of years ago. I believe now you have a solid grasp of computer memory in general. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more and hopefully see you soon.